The defense began its case in the federal sex trafficking trial of Glenn Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein's longtime confidant and alleged co-conspirator. Four alleged victims testified with often heart-wrenching accounts of what they claim Epstein and Maxwell did to them. But the cross-examinations were tough, often highlighting inconsistencies in their accounts. Today, one of the defense's star witnesses took the stand, Elizabeth Loftus, a psychologist and so-called false memory expert. She's testified in hundreds of trials, including a number of high-profile controversial ones like O.J. Simpson, Michael Jackson, Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein. The defense hopes that her testimony might help convince the jurors that the memories of Epstein's accusers are unreliable. Maxwell's lawyers contend that her accusers have misremembered their experiences or invented them with her and Epstein, and in some cases changed their stories to better fit a narrative being pushed by others. Loftus walked the jury through the stages of memory. She also testified that people can remember things differently from how they actually happened because she said memory isn't like a recording device. Quote, we don't just record events and play them back like an idea. She told the jury, we often take bits and pieces of our memories and construct what feels like a recollection. Things started off on the wrong foot for Maxwell's attorneys after federal judge Allison Nathan denied the defense's request to have three witnesses testify anonymously on her behalf. But then the defense's first witness, her former personal assistant, Kimberly Espinoza, downplayed Maxwell's role in Epstein's life. Espinoza, who worked for Maxwell from 1996 to 2002, called her former boss Epstein's estate manager and testified that Maxwell never lived with Epstein during the time she worked for Maxwell. Espinoza, who also previously worked as an assistant for Epstein's lawyers, also described the deceased convicted sex offender as a giver and someone who gave generously to charity, which probably didn't help with her credibility. When it came to Epstein's accusers, Espinosa said she saw nothing during her six years working for Maxwell that pointed to either Maxwell or Epstein behaving inappropriately with underage girls. But on cross-examination, she admitted she didn't work out of Epstein's homes where the accusers have alleged the abuse took place. Now, many thought Maxwell would take the stand in her own defense. I, I kind of thought she would. And while it's still unclear if she will, her lawyers were given until tomorrow to decide, but it's looking less likely since Judge Nathan said to expect closing arguments to begin on Monday. Back with us again, the co-host of the nationally syndicated program Law and Crime Daily, attorneys Terry Austin and Brian Buckmeyer. Terry, um, any chance you think Glenn Maxwell will still testify? Not because of the timing. I think she's going to want to testify. I think she probably should testify to talk about what was happening. Because remember, this is basically she said, she said. And so I think if she testified, it would definitely help. Cross-examination would be horrible, though. Yeah. But because of the timing, I think she probably won't. There's no way you could get finished with both the direct and the cross-examination. So it doesn't look like she's going to. Brian, you agree? Yep. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I actually kind of slightly disagree with, with you, Dan, initially that I didn't think she was ever going to testify. She would have been bombarded with every why under the sun and I think that would have been detrimental to her. And so I kind of expected her not to testify and really rely on her, de her defense team and poking holes here, there, and everywhere to kind of help carry this case for her. Well, I will tell you that, that based on the cross-examination, I haven't been in court, but I have been reading transcriptions coming out of court. It does seem the cross-examinations have been very effective of these uh, four women who are testifying. And I think that may be playing a role here in the decision not to have her testify. Brian, do you agree with that assessment? Oh, absolutely. Every defense attorney worth their salt will tell you that uh, from the time you know you're going to go to trial, you prep your clients for the possibility of testifying. In some cases, you have to, as we talked about earlier in the show with Kim Potter. In some cases, you don't. In some cases, you're on the fence. And I think what we're seeing here is when you're kind of sort of maybe on the fence and the cross-examinations feel like they're going your way while you have prepped your client, this is a time that I would turn to my client and say, you know what? Maybe you don't need to testify. Maybe there's too much with, damage that can be done. Do you agree with my characterization of the cross-examinations? I mean, I, I think the people who aren't watching the trial that closely aren't getting the fact right. that 
there have been real problems with there the prosecution, right? Right. I mean, the prosecution tore up Jane, sorry to say. The fact that at one point she said, well, I, you know, basically uh, have not seen Maxwell and Epstein together, and I don't remember the first time. And then, you know, on the stand, she's now saying that she remembers the first time, she knew where she was, she knew what was going on. And I think that that is saying that her credibility is not that strong. Particularly when it's we're talking about reasonable doubt. Um, Brian, what to make of this decision by the judge not to let these three witnesses testify anonymously? I think it was absolutely correct. Uh, I think the judge themselves uh, said that this is unprecedented. And, and let me step back and say why. Typically, you keep someone anonymous when they are a victim of some sort of crime. There's some sort of mental or physical fear of, of recourse that could happen to them. But when the judge pressed the defense as to why these witnesses should fall into the category of victims who testify anonymously, there wasn't really any leg to kind of stand on as to why they need to be anonymous. So I think well, this was a We know decision. why, right? We know why. They don't want to be associated with Glenn Maxwell. They, they, you know, right? I mean, they don't want to be in the paper. They don't want people knowing that they were part of the defense of Glenn Maxwell. I get it. Um, anyway. All right. Terry Austin and Brian Buckmeyer, it is great to have you both here. Really appreciate it. Hope to see you again soon. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.